What is up, guys? Welcome to the things here. Classic. <laughs> oh no! Oh, the I didn't have it. Not on. I didn't oh. have it. I almost filmed without the mic. What is up guys, Karma Medic here, and welcome back to another dose. Welcome back to episode two of Cooking with Karma Medic. Last time we made a quinoa dish with a lot of meat and vegetables all in one big pan. Today we're gonna be using the oven, which is arguably even more efficient, has less things to clean up when you're done, and is probably even a better use of your time when cooking and meal prepping. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Nasser. I'm now a third year medical student studying at King's College London. And if you're in university as well, you'll know that you feel like you barely have any time to cook. And that's why when I'm cooking, I focus on maximizing my efficiency, maximizing the amount of food that I cook for the amount of time that I spend cooking. And so that's what my cooking philosophy is all about. So for today's episode, we're going to be cooking chicken with potatoes and a ton of vegetables all in the oven. It's going to be a really easy and quick meal to do. So follow me along and I hope you guys enjoy. So most of the time for cooking this meal is going to be in the prep of cutting up the vegetables and cutting up the potatoes. So let's get started with that. All right. So for the vegetables today, we're going to be doing a lot of broccoli. It's one of my favorite vegetables, highly nutritious, has a a good crunchy texture. We're also going to be cutting up some bell peppers. So I like to use all the colors, yellow, red, and then also green, a little bit of asparagus as well. And then finally slice up a lemon just to give it that extra zest. At this point, I'm going to take the chicken thighs out of the fridge. They've been defrosting for quite some time now. The last vegetable we're going to need is some onion. You might as well do the same things at the same time. That's always going to increase your efficiency. So we might as well wash our potatoes at the same time that we wash all our vegetables. So here on the Karma Medic channel, I like to promote efficiency as much as I can. So we're going to use the least amount of utensils as possible, the least amount of cooking things as possible. I'm going to prepare all of my pans, throw on some baking paper. Now it's time to cut up the vegetables. All right, so let's start off with the broccoli. This is probably the easiest vegetable to take care of because once you've washed it, all you have to do is break off the stems and they're basically ready to go. Now, when you guys are cutting up peppers, honestly, you can do it however you want. I tend to cut them in long, thin strips just because I think that's the easiest and it's the most efficient use of my time when it comes to cutting and prepping vegetables. But if you prefer to do them in circles or whatever, that's totally fine too. Just gonna grab a bowl to get all of the trash that I'm accumulating and put it somewhere. So while I'm actually cooking and prepping my meals, I don't actually care if I make a mess anywhere because I know that at the end of my cook, I'm just gonna have one two, three minute session where I wipe down all the counters, pick up anything that fell off of the floor, and that's about it. No matter how much mess you generate, it's not going to be that bad to clean up. So I'd rather do all the cleaning at the end in one big go, instead of doing it all as I go along, because that's just gonna waste a bunch of time. So now it's time to move on to cutting up the onions, and a surprising amount of people don't know this, but if you just chew a piece of gum, while cutting up your onions, it's gonna prevent you from crying. All right, so now that all the vegetables done, let's move on to the chicken. If you've seen my previous videos, then you'll know that I don't really like to season my food. And that's just because it doesn't really make that much of a difference to me. I'm pretty sure all of my taste buds are dead. But anyways, chicken is something that I've sort of learned to season over time. So the way that I do this is actually really, really simple. I grab a Ziploc bag or one of these like sandwich bags, and then I fill it up with an arbitrary amount of spices and panko crumbs. I really like these, so I'm gonna put a lot. Mix it about until you have it all nice and mixed. All right, that looks pretty good to me. And I'm gonna have a designated dirty hand in order to touch all of the chicken and a designated clean hand to do everything else. So I'm gonna open up my bag with spices, take my chicken thigh and literally just throw it in there. Once it's in there, you just shake it about. Make sure that it gets all covered from all angles and sides. And there you have it. That's the easiest way to season your chicken or any other meat before you throw it in the oven. So once it's done, just take it out, plop it down on this big tray, and then move on to the next one. And 
And since the potatoes take longer to cook than the chicken and the vegetables, I'm gonna put those in first for about an extra 10 to 15 minutes and then add the rest of the trays. Now, because I want my potatoes to come out as crispy and crunchy as possible, I'm gonna try and cut them in thin slices so that they can get cooked really well. But of course you can cut them up in cubes or fat circles or whatever it is that you want. Also, I forgot to mention, but probably when you're cutting up all these potatoes is gonna be a good time to turn on the oven. I set the temperature to 180 degrees. That's sort of the standard temperature that you wanna be cooking chicken at for about 25 to 30 minutes. And so while this heats up right now, I'm gonna season all of these potatoes and fix my chicken tray. So for these potatoes, just like everything else that I do, I try and keep it as simple as possible. The easier and simpler it is, the more likely I am to do it and the faster I'm gonna get done with the cooking part of this process. So the only thing I do for my potatoes usually is I put olive oil, pepper, and salt. You can also put on paprika or whatever else that you want. That's something that we do sometimes. I just take the olive oil and I drizzle it across in these sort of diagonal lines. Very easy, very quick. And this sort of helps the potatoes get their like sizzle on when they're in the oven. And then just a row of salting. I personally don't use salt in my food almost ever, but because my sister eats a bunch of these meals as well, and she definitely loves her salt, I have to put it on. Then a quick round of pepper as well. So ideally you wanna put these potato trays in about 10 to 15 minutes before the chicken trays and that way they can get well sizzled and well crunchy as we want them. But ideally you wanna flip them halfway through. Anyway, you heard the oven beep, it's time to put these in. All right, so now that the potato trays are in the oven, I'm gonna set a quick timer on my phone for about 12, 13 minutes, so that we know when it's time to put in our chicken tray and let's start working on that. This is actually probably my favorite part of the whole cooking experience. So yeah guys, that's basically it. That is the whole tray. Everything is on there, all the vegetables, all the chicken. And now it's time to put it in the oven. All right guys, so now I'm gonna put a timer on my phone for about 20 minutes, 23 minutes, something like that. And then we'll come and check it and see if it's cooked enough as we like it and we can always leave it in for longer. But while the chicken's in the oven and there's basically nothing for us to do, this is a good time to clean up all the mess that you've made. So at this point, I'm gonna wipe down all the counters, clean up any utensils or cutting boards that I've used along the way, just so that I can save time for me in the future. So you see, it's actually really easy. The main cleaning up that you have to do with a cook like this is those big trays. And yeah, that's gonna take me about five to seven minutes later over here, getting rid of the grease and everything, but it's minimal cleanup for the amount of food that we're making. All right guys, so the timer's gone off and it's time to check on the food. A lot of smoke is gonna come out, so I might have to fan at the fire alarm, but let's see. Oh, potatoes look really, really good. All right, so look at that. Perfectly crisp golden brown potatoes. Yum, 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 yum. Second tray is looking good too. Maybe these ones here. So, and then last but not least, that chicken tray. Oh, yum, 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 yum. Is it foggy? Yeah. <laughs> So before I decide everything's ready and I start putting it into Tupperwares, I'm just gonna test one of the chickens to see if it's cooked all the way through. And the way you do this is you cut the fattest chicken, the one that's the thickest. If that's cooked, then everything else is cooked. So let's see what we can find here. This chicken looks quite big. Just gonna cut down right through. Look at all that juicy goodness. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. All right, so it looks perfectly cooked. Now we can start putting it into Tupperware so that we can portion out for the rest of the week. So we've got a bunch of Tupperwares. I'm gonna start by taking one piece of chicken and putting it in each. So yeah, basically this part is really simple. I'm just trying to like spread out equally all of the food that we've cooked across the different Tupperwares. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, guys, so basically everything is finished now. We've got these trays over here to clean up later. And then we have down here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Tupperwares of food ready for the week to come. Now, in the last episode of Cooking with Karma Medic, one of my closest friends, Arslan, was the guy who was tasting the food and giving you his honest opinion. Give your honest opinion. Like off camera? <laughs> This time, it's gonna be my twin sister, Noor. She's gonna taste the food and let you guys know what she thinks. All right, all right. Let it... <laughs> Not on the couch! All right, all right, all right. Tell the people what you think. Wow, it looks great. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's good, all right, all right. It's a good start, it's a good start. Good? Mm -hmm. Is it still juicy? Mm -hmm. All right, give it a quick rating out of 10. You put me on the spot here. <laughs> Good boy, man. I give it a seven. A seven? <laughs> a seven. <laughs> you get seven. 10 out of 10. All right, guys, so that is it. You heard it firsthand from the horse's mouth. The food was at least a seven out of 10, which is honestly good enough for me. So from start to finish, a meal like this will usually take me between an hour, maybe an hour and five, an hour and 10 minutes. So if you think about it, it's a very little amount of time to invest in seven fully cooked meals ready for the coming week. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do wanna see any more cooking videos from me, definitely do leave a like on this video and let me know in a comment down below. I really enjoy making them and I would love to do more. I'm gonna go back to the kitchen and clean the grease off of all of those trays and I will see you in the next one. Peace! All done!